Okay, traders, welcome to today's live market analysis session with me, Patrick Munley. If you can hear me and see the Tickmill welcome screen, if you just type a Y in the chat box. Bear with me here and we will get going. Okay, so before we get going with today's material, we, as always, want to adhere to the risk disclaimer. <clears throat> as we uh, probably most of us are aware by now, uh, trading carries an inherent uh, financial risk. You can lose more capital than you necessarily have on deposit. <clears throat> and most importantly for today, um, the views or opinions expressed by me are solely mine and they are not representative of those held by Ticknell UK or Ticknell Europe Limited. Uh, so before we get started, I'll just, for those who are here for the first time, I uh, want to uh, give you a brief int introduction as to uh, who I am and where I'm, uh, where I'm coming from with respect uh, to the markets. Um, after I graduated from uh, King's College London, I joined a city consulting firm. Um, I left with some colleagues and went on to successfully uh, co-found and exit a consulting startup uh, post-emerger that uh, occurred in late 2004. I then moved on to explore my passion for markets. Give me one second, let me just turn off this other audio feed. Let's get rid of that. Um, I then went on to explore my passion for markets. So with some capital to play with, and some time on my hands, I started day trading, or should I say day gambling, uh, the S&P. And after some early beginner's luck ran out, I actually uh, experienced a six-figure financial hit. It was at this point that I had to step back from the markets, uh, a gut-wrenching experience to, uh, to say the least. Um, but in stepping back, I decided to get serious about trading. And so I sought out a mentor who demonstrated excellence in the field of trading. And I worked with him for 18 months to two years. It was a period during which I upped not just my technical game in terms of developing, researching my strategy, extensively back and forward testing it, all of which was underpinned by a rigorous risk management approach. But most importantly, um, during this period of mentorship, I significantly developed my mental game. And probably isn't the most important uh, watershed that occurred during this period uh, was that I moved from being a highly goal-orientated individual uh, focused on financial gains to being purely process-orientated. So what does that actually mean? Well, it means I had to stop focusing on what I could make from the markets and start focusing solely on managing my mindset to allow me to consistently execute my trading strategy, oftentimes in the face of negative feedback from the markets in the form of losing trades. Once you become process orientated and have a professional trading mindset and, then, and you understand the true nature of trading really being a numbers game in which you're simply playing the probabilities, you then lose that emotional investment and that hellish emotional roller coaster of living and dying by the outcome of individual trades. I'm no longer concerned with the outcome of individual trades or even strings of trades. My focus is on the next 100 trades because I know if I focus on excellence in terms of execution, my edge will demonstrate itself over an extended series of outcomes. My multi-strategy approach has delivered profitable annual returns since 2008. Uh, from 2013, I've also been managing investor capital through my managed account service, delivering annual positive returns. I'm currently responsible for managing a multi-million dollar portfolio. Performance for this service is on the screen at the moment, uh, in the top right-hand corner there. Uh, since 2010, I've also personally mentored over 100 private traders of all experience levels, from complete novices to former CME floor traders in developing the technical and, more, more importantly, the mental skills to reap consistent returns from the markets. I've also consulted to uh, numerous brokers and trading education brands, uh, contributing written content webinars and live presentation on a range of topics from market analysis to, tra uh, to trading strategy development and execution. 
In addition to my fund management and private mentoring, I'm also a resident market expert for TICMA, providing uh, market and trade analysis on a daily basis through my daily market outlook and uh, chart of the day. Uh, you can subscribe to this via the TICMIL blog and you can actually receive these um, directly into your inbox. Uh, my other real passion project is as the head of trading and trader education for a leading trader education brand called fxcareerswap.com offering development and more importantly funding to retail trading talent. So the FX Career Swap, we don't just develop retail traders market and trading knowledge. We work on mindset development through our structured program that culminates in managing our firm's capital at zero personal financial risk on a profit share basis. Uh, for those who are interested, I'll post a link in the chat at the end of today's presentation. Okay, so that gives you a flavor of where I'm coming from. So let's jump into uh, today's material. Just want to check back and remind you guys in terms of where we are in terms of broader risk assets and risk markets uh, and our barometer for that being the S&P 500. Um, we have been looking for the markets to, uh, to top out as they have done over um, previous uh, pre-election cycles in the, uh, in the September timeframe. And what we're looking for now is for risk markets to basically trade sideways to down um, heading into uh, the election and, and potentially post the election, depending upon uh, the results we get. Obviously, we're hearing a lot of sound bites from Trump at the moment, uh, talking about potentially even contesting the election if, uh, if Biden wins. So we'll, that's, uh, that's increasing an amount of uncertainty in the markets. We also have the, uh, the sad passing of Ruth Bader Ginsburg last week, and we now have Trump trying to get a, uh, a new chief justice through uh, to the Supreme Court. That's also causing some concern uh, for markets with respect to uh, the Supreme Court will ultimately be the final arbiter of any uh, legal wranglings with respect to uh, the US election. So I want to keep these charts in mind in terms of the seasonal setup and how the market is playing out at the moment. Um, so let's jump in and look at some charts. So what I've got here is the, the dollar index. Um, for those who uh, joined previous sessions, you'll understand this fractal pattern that I've been tracking. And what I'm anticipating is um, that we see a correction now uh, versus the, uh, the overlay from the, uh, the September uh, 2017 setup. And you can see that um, We've, we've made a low here in September. What we're looking for now is, is a move higher. Um, and what I've overlaid here, this, this in, internal orange box, basically replicates the prior corrective phase. Will it, will it necessarily map perfectly? We don't know, but certainly you can see the similarities in terms of how price action has been developing um, with the structure being very similar to what we saw during 2017. So ultimately what that means um, for me at the moment anyway is that I'm looking for a correction here in the dollar um, and then I'm looking for, for new loans. Um, as many of you will know who uh, follow me or work with me, um, I'm pretty structurally bearish the dollar over, over the coming period as, uh, as I've talked about previously. Um, what I also want to highlight here is the similarity in terms of the psych indicator here, you can see that um, we've broken out from the, the bear channel here and we had a similar breakout uh, during that, this uh, prior corrected phase. So everything's syncing up pretty nicely here. And um, what we're gonna be watching for now are levels or um, areas where we could potentially engage the dollar um, to initiate new short positions and we'll look in detail at that now. So what we've got here is the, uh, the broad dollar index, this dollar index versus six pairs, slightly outdated um, now with respect to the input from the Swedish krona, and we don't have the Australian dollar factored in here. Um, but what we're looking for is uh, potential confluent areas whereby we could see uh, opportunities to, to look at reselling the dollar. And we are certainly testing one uh, or getting close to testing one uh, in these coming sessions. Um, the, these, these markets have a tendency, or, or certainly uh, statistically they have a tendency, 
to you see cycle tops and bottoms either on Fridays and Mondays. That's the highest distribution of, of uh, market tops and bottoms. So here, what we're looking at is a correction to, to complete, basically. We have the descending trend line resistance. We have symmetry swing resistance. And we also have this equality objective here. Let's draw that in. Into this zone here at the 94.50. So what I'm watching for now is, um, for reversal patterns. Now, um, you can be, you can look at these on the, the intraday timeframes, the hourly or the four hour timeframe. I don't necessarily suggest going any lower than that as those uh, lower timeframes are certainly very noisy, but you can certainly start to probe those uh, intraday timeframes, hourly or the four hour, seeing, uh, for watching for reversal patterns, uh, but most importantly, really on the daily. You can also see we're testing the channel here in terms of the psych indicator, and, uh, and we're starting to, to find some resistance there in terms of that uh, momentum study as well. So really wanna pay close attention today, tomorrow and Monday, as, uh, as we also have the 50% retracement of that decline from July. So everything's syncing up pretty nicely here. We have the prior spike lows at 94.80. So this is the zone, the potential price reversal zone that we really want to, uh, to keep an eye on. In terms, of, uh, in terms of the dollar. Obviously, we're gonna look at the, the majors in a minute and you'll see the implications for those and uh, the current levels we're testing there. We'll just quickly take a look at, uh, this is the broad, I'm sorry, this is the equal weighted dollar index, the Dow Jones dollar index. And this is dollar index versus the Euro, the Aussie, the Yen and the Sterling on an equal weighted basis. So you see a slightly different um, pricing structure here, but certainly you can see the similarities in terms of the price action and the setup. And I always like to see um, the dual confirmation. So if, this, if the broad-based broad dollar index is gonna roll over from here, then I'm also looking for this equal weight dollar index to roll over from its current levels as well. Um, where you get that dual confirmation, then for me anyway, and, and the, the, the team I work with, I call it a, a dollar basket sell signal or dollar basket buy signal. And, um, and certainly you can look, when you, get a, when you get a strong signal here, you can certainly pay, start paying attention to the Euro, Sterling and the Aussie, not so much the dollar yen, but as you'll see in a minute, I'm, I'm watching the dollar yen today, uh, but certainly where you get a reversal in this, uh, in this equal weighted dollar index, then that immediately gives you or should draw your attention to potential opportunities in the Euro, Aussie and the Sterling. And we're gonna take a look at those now. So with the Euro, we are testing in the euro uh, equality support so we have uh, equal weight equal legs into this zone this 1650 haven't really caught a bid as of yet we have just below us the symmetry swing support so um let me just draw that in for people who aren't aware of what i'm talking about when i say symmetry swing so basically we're looking at the um the largest corrective leg in the current cycle and identifying where that completes as well. And so you can see we're in the zone here, this 1650 to 15, uh, 1586. So we've got about a 50 or 60 pit window here, where I, again, want to be paying close attention to see uh, if we can get a reversal going here in the Euro. Let's just uh, also see if we've got the channel similar to that of the dollar. We can clone that and bring this down here. And you can see we're testing the channel support as well. So if we, can find, if, if, if we start to see bids emerge here in the coming sessions, then this could actually then be our, um, our fourth wave low in the dollar, uh, sorry, in the Euro. Let me just draw that in for you. So this is wave one and two. Extended wave three. This will put us into wave four. And then what we'll be looking for would be at a minimum an equality objective. Oops, that's in the wrong place. So let's put that there. And clone that. This would give us this upside target of uh, 121.50. So we just take out those prior cycle highs and, uh, and that's the pattern uh, or the Elliott wave structure 
for those who uh, follow LA Wave to, uh, to be looking at, certainly, uh, or certainly pay attention to the potential for that. Now, if we don't find anyone home here in terms of um, buyers at this 1580 to 1650 area, then if we go back to um, the fractal, that would mean that we are likely to extend in terms of the dollar index. So that would see the dollar index pushing up back towards these breakdown lows here. Let's draw that in. So we have this break point here. So that would see the dollar index extending its current gains. And then if we go back to, our, well, actually we've got a, I've drawn that. I've put the same fractal uh, on the euro here. So what we're what we're essentially hypothesising at this stage is that we're in this phase of price action now, um, similar to the dollar index being in this phase. So if that's going to be the case, then we could actually extend to the downside here to actually retest our um, our breakout point above that. Uh, 115 high. So we're paying attention to this current level, 1650 to 1586. If we fail here, then we're anticipating that we'll trade down to retest 115. That would be the next area of interest in terms of looking at, uh, at swing trading this, this euro on the long side. And then obviously, if we fail to hold 115, then, uh, then we're looking at potentially meaningfully uh, trading meaningfully lower in the euro. Um, but for now, the, the base case scenario for me is watching this current area, and then if we fail there, watching the 115. So uh, that, should, uh, that should give you a sense of what I'm looking at in terms of the euro. Let's check in with uh, the dollar yen. So dollar yen, um, did a video on this this morning. We've come into the symmetry swing resistance. We're retesting the broken ascending trend line support where we traded through the bottom of this triangle. And, um, and we, uh, what I'm watching for now is the potential that we, uh, we put in a, a double top here. We've got two nice tails developing at the moment. Obviously, I'm going to wait to see where we close on these. But um, if we hold this 105.30, 105.50 area as resistance, then I think we, uh, we can see the, the dollar yen trade lower and, um, and certainly I'd be looking at, uh, at a move, something like this to get us down into that uh, 103.50 zone, uh, which is the 78.6% retracement of, uh, of the advance here. So that would be the, the downside objective. So a couple of hundred pips to play for here. But again, we need to see, we need to get the confirmation to either get those closes on the intraday, the four hour or the daily time frame are the, uh, are the preferred ones to, to watch for that confirmation. We've got the Looney dollar CAD trading up into its symmetry swing resistance and these prior lows, also the 50% retracement of this decline. So if, uh, if we can get a reversal here in terms of the Looney, then, uh, then we should be looking at, uh, at initiating uh, short positions, uh, certainly targeting a retest of this 130 low. And if we get through there, then the 127 extension comes in at one, uh, 128. So again, paying close attention. It's got a bit of work to do here in terms of the daily time frame for those who uh, trade my strategy. What I'm looking for is a close back below uh, this near-term volume weighted average price. This is a, a five period look back in terms of uh, the ticks and what basically what that's giving us is it's giving us a look under the hood and the past five days of data and letting us know whether or not there'll be more up ticks than down ticks so more bids coming into the market than more offers and at the moment uh, looks buoyant but you know like I say watch these closes if we've got a, a reversal or we stall out at this level here consolidate overnight and then tomorrow we get the reversal that's also the alternative scenario um, so I certainly want to pay attention to the close here. We're testing some, uh, some pivotal resistance. Got a similar situation developing here in the Singapore dollar. Um, you can see that we had uh, a, a symmetry swing resistance versus that uh, initial recovery from the, uh, the uh, post-reaction highs. And so what I've been looking for in the Singapore dollar, again, similar setup, is, uh, is if we can get a reversal here, then, uh, then I think we make 
uh, new lows in the Singapore dollar down to 133, currently trade 137. Again, though, it's these closes. And one of the challenges for me in terms of this setup is the dispersion uh, with respect to where price is trading and, and the volume weighted average price. So uh, we'll, have to, uh, we'll have to watch this one, but watching for reversals here, um, similar, to the, uh, similar to the Canadian dollar, if you don't have the option for trading the Singapore dollar. Um, let's look at sterling. <clears throat> sterling highlighted this, uh, this pattern in the, uh, the weekly market outlook uh, out on uh, Monday. Uh, saw the similarity or the potential for the similarity. Now, again, with these price patterns, you don't necessarily, they don't necessarily you know, match to the, to the pip here, but certainly you can see the similarity in structure. And at the moment, we're holding uh, this projected ascending trend line support. Now, this, the sterling, we could certainly see uh, a bullish reversal here. And if we, uh, if we get that, then I'll be looking at uh, being long sterling uh, into this evening's close uh, for, uh, for another leg higher here. And certainly we could be up re-challenging uh, the breakout point here at 130.50, currently trade 127.80. So, I mean, you know, there's nice 300 pips, even just trading back into that prior support to act as resistance. But uh, we could trade meaningfully higher here. UK uh, Chancellor has been out today, um, promising an, un an open-ended checkbook essentially to, uh, to basically secure the UK economy through, uh, through these next six months of extended restrictions, the market seemed to, uh, to cheer that. And so let's see where we closed here with sterling, but certainly an opportunity potentially developing in sterling. Now, again, the equal weighted dollar index, which, cat, which takes a, a, an equal weighted measure of, of sterling is obviously taking its lead at the moment from that bump in sterling, because we're certainly not at this point anyway, seeing that, uh, that Euro strength. Um, the other major constituent being the Aussie. Aussie still trading heavy here. I'm looking for the Aussie basically to test, um, to take out stops below the 70 level. I think then maybe we can see a bounce, but uh, like I say, it, to my mind at this stage, it, it will be just a bounce. Um, let's just see, I think we've actually exceeded the um, quality objective here. Let's draw this in. Yeah, we have, but what we've got now is the 161 extension. So this 161 extension, which is coming in perfectly now, this is sending trend line. So I want to pay attention to uh, 69.80 area. And, uh, and again, you can look at this if, you, if you've got the time to be watching the screens. I know uh, there are quite a few screen junkies out there. Um, the intraday time frames, the hourly, four hour, watch for reversal patterns in and around this area to, uh, to look for longs. And we can certainly re-challenge this break, break point uh, from below in terms of the Aussie. Um, Let's take a look at the Kiwi. Kiwi's trading into uh, potential support here, or what I think might be the development of neckline in terms of a, uh, a potential head and shoulders pattern, which may develop here in the Kiwi. This, this, to my mind, is the first leg down in the corrective pattern. And what I've been looking for ultimately is, uh, is a push, push back up into the 67 area. This is obviously, let's just draw this in for clarity. So this is going to be our shoulder. And this is our head here. And then we're looking for a right shoulder to develop like so. So look for a move. Anyway, back up into this uh, 66, uh, 67 area as a shorting opportunity. Watch for those reversal patterns to get short and I'd be looking for a target move down to this 63.70 in, uh, in the Kiwi dollar. Um, let's see the other ones that I've flagged up here, Euro Yen. So the Euro Yen, another symmetry swing setup developing here uh, with the Euro Yen. You can see this last big corrective move we had, well I'm looking for an, an equality objective. Um, so I'm looking for the Euro Yen to test this 122 area, and certainly again, watch for those reversal patterns. As, uh, as a minimum, I would think that we could get a bounce back up into uh, this break point here, which again, those uh, eager eyes, head and shoulders watchers, uh, could be the, the leg that sets up a, another head and shoulders pattern here in the Euro Yen, and then, oops, and then we could see price 
trade lower to retest this base back towards 119. So uh, this is the level to watch, uh, 122 potential there to get long, looking for uh, a 125 test and then lower again if the heavy shoulders pattern plays out. Uh, let's see what I've got here. Let's take a look, Aussie CAD. Aussie CAD, that's in the range, nothing to do there. Kiwi CAD's a bit more interesting. Uh, you can see here, got a potential third test of an ascending trend line. And for those who, uh, who work with me on a regular basis, they will know that these third tests uh, tend to be uh, decent opportunities, high probability opportunities. So any move into this, uh, this ascending trend line at the 87 handle, again, you can watch on those intraday timeframes for, um, for reversal setups or reversal patterns. And then again, another potential head and shoulders scenario could develop there in the uh, Kiwi CAD, CAD Swiss, trading in the triangle still, nothing to do there. So let's take a look, uh, S&P 500, testing pivotal, uh, pivotal support here. If we take out this trend line, then, uh, then I'm looking for this 3136 to be tested. And, um, and that would be the equality objective. We also have the weekly S3 coming in there. So again, what I'd be thinking is, you know, an, an interim low to be, to be put in uh, while we uh, then have the potential to back and fill. Um, but ultimately, I think, uh, again, thinking about that uh, pre-presidential election cycle, I think we trade sideways to lower, and certainly we could be back into this uh, 3,000 level uh, ahead of the US elections. We can get some type of, uh, uh, sorry, equal weighted, um, three pushes, three equal legs down, completing a correction into this, uh, this 3,000 level. So that's also on my radar, NASDAQ, was looked like it was going to hold a, 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 an equality objective in terms of uh, the, the channel here, but we're failing. So now we want to think in terms of the quality objective using price pattern here. So this could have the NASDAQ back down at the 10,000 level. Um, and so uh, certainly if we get through these lows at the 1066, then uh, and that is going to open up this, this 10,000 level in the NASDAQ. Let's check in with the metals here. Gold, continuing to trade in this uh, protracted, what is potentially a fourth wave setup. Uh, we have the equality objective, uh, sorry, symmetry swing objective and the equality objective here, all suggesting that we should see an 1800 test. And from there, certainly again, we'll be paying attention for those reversal patterns as buying opportunities. Um, and we could be re-challenging re highs and potentially take those out. Certainly if we head into any type of contested US, US election, uh, that should see uh, money flood into gold. Similar scenario in silver, actually sitting on the trend line support and the equality objective here in silver. So watching for bullish reversal patterns here, silver may lead gold in this instance. Um, so again, paying attention to this uh, 22, 30 area in silver. Crude, uh, correcting still here, I think, uh, certainly whilst we hold 41.65, look at a minimum of the 33.75. We also have the weekly S3 coming in there, 33.30. And finally, I just want to highlight copper here. This copper has basically been uh, leading the charge in terms of the correction in, in commodity currencies. But we, uh, we look like we might be rolling over here. We're sitting on the weekly S3. So, I mean, we could see some profit taking and a bit of a pullback. But um, look for the equality objective initially here. Sorry, the symmetry swing objective, uh, which would bring us into the uh, two, 290 level. And then again, I think with, uh, with copper, if we can get... If we get this move develop, then I think that would be the first leg in what could be a more um, meaningful correction. Let's just see. So again, this would coincide with a bit of a pullback in the Aussie and the Kiwi before we then see uh, another leg lower to, uh, to retest this base back to 277. And then again, we could be thinking about a more meaningful head and shoulders scenario developing in copper. Okay, so those are the, uh, the main instruments and opportunities I'm, I'm monitoring at the moment. Um, are there any questions? 
Um, so uh, then ask uh, NASDAQ, what do we measure against that, please? So if it's uh, what, uh, you can't, not, you can't really measure um, the NASDAQ in, yeah, again, it, it's, it's a risk, it's a risk asset um, as such, but what the, the major correlation with the, the NASDAQ, ironically, had actually been the Aussie. Um, they pretty much been tracking uh, very well and it would now appear, you, as you can see here, you can see the similarities in terms of the structure. Obviously, it didn't have quite the blow-off move that the NASDAQ had. But if, if, you, if you think in terms of um, risk market or the risk assets being the, the equity market, then you think in terms of risk FX being that, you know, the Aussie and the Kiwi are the two, are the two prime, uh, prime considerations. Hi, Charlie. How are you doing? Patrick, you're right. So it's um, kind of a quick question. It's just more on the uh, equidistant swing. Um, it's just what would you actually, uh, what would kind of like invalidate a, uh, a swing, so to speak? Um, they would have to take out the swing high. So right. as long as this swing high is in place, then this is the measured move objective. So when it comes to like redrawing, um, when a trend is like progressing, um, what, what kind of what would like factors would you uh, look for for that? Well, I, I'm, there, there's nothing to redraw because whilst the swing high is in place, then this is this is the pattern. Ah, got it. So Good. the only way you'd, you'd you'd have to reconsider this is if we took out that high here. Right. Okay. Yeah, to, from there to there. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. Yeah, just wanted to clear that one up. Yeah, swing low, and then you'd have a new high. Um, and, 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 you know, really in terms of corrections, once we're through the 78.6%, then the, the likelihood is that, the, you know, there isn't a correction and the trend remains firmly intact and we're, we're going to break out to make new highs. Yeah, good stuff. That makes sense? Yeah, it does. Cheers, Patrick. Thanks very much. Any other questions? If you type a, uh, an N in the chat box, just so I know that we're all on the same page and everyone's satisfied. Okay, great stuff. Well, look, thanks very much for your time today. I hope this has helped and we will reconvene at the same time next week. Thanks very much.